and my hair is a bit of a mess today. Please ignore it. Hey folks, I'm Shigram, and this is the screen cap. A lot of people have been waiting, wanting to hear more about the upcoming game Death Stranding, and now people have finally gotten more info as well as a gameplay trailer. Uh, before we didn't really have any idea about what this game was about other than little bits of gameplay involving exploration, uh, but Sony has pulled through and given us what we've been really craving, news! We now have a confirmed release date of November 8th of this year and a good chunk of gameplay to watch and analyze so we actually can figure out what the hell Kojima's even making. To be honest, uh, I've no real idea what this game's about. There's like a weird baby and stuff, uh, but it looks like a really interesting world to explore. Uh, there's some third person fighting involved and the game looks like you're trying to rebuild a society that was destroyed by some other beings. Also Kojima made it. So I mean, it looks really cool. And even though I don't have a PlayStation, uh, I'm really looking forward to this game and what it has to offer. I just hope the map is so massive that it'll take years for players to explore every little bit because uh, replayability is important, but, but put things in the world, please. Okay, th first of all, I have to ask why? Why was this necessary? I mean, okay, cool. Does Smash Ultimate really need VR support? Whatever, uh, so yeah, apparently in the latest patch, uh, you can play Smash Ultimate in VR if you want. Uh, we assume this will be similar to the VR experiences that have been recently added to Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey, uh, but to me, it just makes a lot less sense to have a VR support for a fighting game. Uh, <laughs> maybe they'll add some cool features with the Labo VR uh, for Smash Ultimate, maybe some new mini games or something. I don't know. Uh, I just want to see them do something with this, you know? Uh, also included in this patch is you can train your amiibos by sending them off on journeys under the games and more, and then by selecting the amiibo menu. Uh, so I guess that's neat if you've been wanting a better way to train your amiibos, I guess. In case you didn't know, Infinity Ward has recently announced the newest COD game, Modern Warfare. Well, new game, but an old title, but whatever. The trailer mainly focuses on the single player campaign, uh, i.e. the one thing Black Ops 4 doesn't have. And uh, we know that the campaign will consist of uh, two halves. Uh, the first will have you playing as a special forces operator, and the second will have you play as a rebel fighter. Uh, so that's kind of cool. So you get two different storylines that converge at some point. That's kind of a thing that COD does. Uh, with this, they're aiming to show both sides of one war and give us a look into modern war in the real world. Uh, they're also trying to be more gritty with this campaign since over the years, COD kind of lost some of its impact and shock value and instead became, you know, Hollywood blockbuster simulator, shooty shoot game, the video game. So uh, get ready for some real edge gamers. Uh, get ready for uh, No Russian 2. Please, please, no, please don't. Don't let it be that edgy, please. Good old Infinity Ward also gave some info about the plans for multiplayer. Uh, they stated that they plan to have Modern Warfare be cross-platform between Xbox and PC. Uh, so look out, console peasants, because keyboard and mouse is king. Oh, wait, what? Uh, nope, you can only fight people using the same exact control styles. Then what's the point of cross-play? Who's out there playing COD on a PC with a controller? Anyone? Raise your hands. Nobody? Great. I mean, the Xbox supports mouse and keyboard, but like, why? <laughs> Why would you have a console with a, K a KBM? That doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. I don't know. Uh, I'm just very confused. I mean, I guess it makes sense so that PC players don't totally annihilate console players, uh, but like, God. Sorry, I got a little ranty there. Uh, I do that sometimes. Overall, I have high hopes, even though it's uh, just a COD game. I'm looking forward to the fact that it has a single player campaign and local multiplayer, which is pretty cool. Bring that back, please. Let's just hope this isn't gonna turn out like Black Ops 4 did on launch. The epic pirate-based sea sailing booty plundering game that is Sea of Thieves is breaking out of the virtual constraints and invading the real world uh, in tabletop form. Uh, you can tell that Jebs wrote this part because he likes both Sea of Thieves and tabletop games. Hmm, why do I write this one's in here? Mongoose Publishing is working to bring Sea of Thieves to the public as a tabletop RPG, which sounds extremely fun and something that only Jebs would like. Oh right, he's not here today. Thank you. Mongoose stated that this game has been designed for quick immersive role playing that favors action, problem solving, and above all, fun. I love fun. Tabletop games and fun don't necessarily always share the same space for me, but I like fun. Uh, this tabletop RPG will play very similarly to the video game with the objective being to race against each other in search of treasure or to kill some skeletons to steal their skulls or to just relax and do some deliveries for the Merchant Alliance. Those who purchase the tabletop RPG will also receive an exclusive in-game item, uh, the Lord Guardian Sails, which are a nice red and yellow design. Um, so Jebs and his crew can finally complete their McDonald's ship at last. Good lord, stop. You can pre-order the RPG for 60 pounds, which is around 75 US dollars. The first season of Apex Legends is coming to a close, so naturally Respawn is showing off some of the new stuff to come to the next season. Season 2, finally? Okay. I think Fortnite's on like season 50 by now. Let's start off with what I think is the most important feature coming to the Battle Pass for next season. 
Oh, the battle pass. Challenges. Uh, there's gonna be challenges that'll help you level up your pass much faster. Um, some weekly challenges and some daily challenges. Uh, so this game's becoming relevant again, yay. They said that they want these challenges to offer some variation in each game, but not ones that'll drastically change the gameplay. You know, just like some some extra side quests to do, basically. So that's kind of cool. They're going to reward you for some more creative gameplay. Uh, unlike the first season, this new season pass will have worthwhile rewards. Every 25 levels, you will receive a legendary item. The level 100 tier will also be an evolving weapon skin, uh, but they also will reward players who make it to level 110 with a special recolored version of that weapon skin. Uh, so this is at least a lot better than the season one rewards, which are just... Badges and stat trackers mostly. Who even uses stat trackers? Who cares? Everyone, like every game has stat trackers. Who cares? Just put it in the analytics. It's not something I care about. Give me like a cool rainbow skin or something. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Screen Cap. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, we will be back with more gaming news very soon. Here are some more videos that we have made. Is that the right side? Is this the right side? I think it's this side. It's going to be on this side. I'm going to leave now. Have a good one.